you've got questions, we've got answers. Tune in Tuesdays at 12 on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, where we will be hosting a variety of community experts that will answer your questions. Hi everyone, it's Jillian, and join me as we chat about ways to make your beauty routine just a little bit more bold. See you then. It's just allergies or something and I can't get rid of it. So if you have any home remedies for congestion or anything besides Mucinex, please put it in the chat. Help me out. <laughs> and most Sorry. importantly, welcome to Tip Tuesday, everybody out there. And we are wishing you all the happiest and healthiest of 2021. And before we start, I just wanted to remind all of you out there and all of our viewers that you have access to all of our community programs whether it's via this Facebook link or on our website and all of our videos are also on our YouTube channel. And um, we hope that you access that information. And also to give you an update, we're not back in the studio yet shooting um, because we really do have to wait till it's safe for all of our community to participate. But in the meantime, we're giving you virtual support through Tip Tuesday, through our conversations. And I also wanted to share with you um, something that we have on our website that you need to check out. So on our website, we have resources and communication and conversations. And in there is our newsletter, which you can download you to access access and, and look at right there and can see what's happening this month in January. And we've got lots of great things happening, including some guests who have been our subjects in the past who are experts. But there's also right here in the corner, it says resources for you for our tribe. Now, if you go to resources and conversations too, you can get di direct links to the people who are offering free services to our community. So that's Annette Tello who donates a 50 minute private counseling session. And then also Paula Leach, who we had on as a guest last week, who has two group therapy sessions that she's offering to, I think about 15 of our members. So please sign up for either of those, um, especially the group therapy, because it's, it's, um, it's definitely beneficial for everyone. And there's going to be more information on that, but please check them out and go to those sites as well. And in the meantime, <laughs> as you know, our theme this month is bold beauty. And my question to Jillian is, why did you choose bold beauty? Well, you know, I think, Michelle, as fighters and survivors, one of our challenges is that there is this constant looking back to who we were, right? You know, always comparing. But in many ways, and we talk about this all the time, we are a new self, whether being pushed into early menopause or, you know, having changes from the medicines, it's all different for, for each person. So seeing this new self as beautiful is very important. It's an important part of our healing process. And I'm a huge advocate of defending our right to want to feel beautiful and that it's not fluff and it's not shallow. And when people say, hey, just be grateful you survived, I'm like, being grateful has nothing to do with it. We are grateful. And I have been trolled personally, you know, on my own Facebook page for, you know, talking about beauty, for people just saying, you know, you should just not worry about your skin and be grateful that you survived. I'm like, you know what? Shut the hell up. You don't live in my skin. Uh, we are grateful. How dare you? You know, it is any woman's right to want to feel beautiful. And yes. now with survivors and fighters, we have to move forward in this body, right? So we have to find ways and learn to love it and find exciting things in newness. And for me, being bold is part of that challenge. And bold means several things. Like it's about being unapologetic. It's trying something totally new and opposite, or it's pushing a boundary of something that you already have. So that's why I said, no, we're doing bold beauty. That's it. Yeah. yeah, I love it because I am woman. Hear me roar. Yeah, How dare you <laughs> so, tell me it's fluff. Are, let's, let's get the ball rolling. So what are some of the things? Let's go through a, a few easy steps to make us feel better, make us feel good and bolder. Okay, so I went with three things that are really important to me when it comes to beauty. And number one, it's that, I, oh, <laughs> I saw that, I saw the person go by. 
And the, the first thing you can do out of the gate when trying to really figure out, you know, kind of this new bold body that you're in and who you are is you got to do the research. So what style of, of beauty do you love and do you see working for you? And it has to be for you, not what you think everyone wants to see. Like, let me give you a, for, a, a, a general, for instance, after cancer, my hair came back this mud color, right? It was this weird brown mud silver. It wasn't a pretty color. My hairline was very thin and very pushed back. And all of a sudden, this pixie cut that had defined me was gone. And I remember being on QVC with the brown hair growing in and seeing some bald spots and being mortified, not knowing it was there and being like, okay, you know what, that, that hair is gone forever. So I did the research. I pulled some inspiration from people because I love 60s beauty. So I pulled yes, things do. from Mia Farrow, Jean Seberg, even Grace Jones, who I think is so bold and fabulous, right? So Amber Rose, people like that. You know, Jean Seberg, I, okay, so this is Jean Seberg and she pretty much has been, you know, a huge inspiration for me when it comes to beauty. I mean, her pixie haircut, is everything. I think it's so fabulous. Her overall style has always inspired me. So what I recommend is if you're struggling and you want to be a little more bold and you're looking for change, write down some things that come to mind, then go to Pinterest, sit down and see what comes up. Just pop in curly hair, shaved heads, That's blonde it. beauty, you know, just go in, type around, have fun with it, and then pull some elements from it. Number two, Number two, I have to say is fragrance. And I, I really think this is important. So because fragrance is so mood lifting and mood altering. So add in or change your fragrance. So I just want to share my personal. So I always use uh, pure grace from philosophy. Pure grace is soap and water clean. Like I live in this. It is like getting out of the shower, ivory, uh, ivory soap. I love it. So for 2021, I added in, this is, um, Erin Lauder Amber Musk. I am not a big fragrance person, but this is a very gentle, earthy, warm scent. Um, it's, it's perfectly balanced. It's an oriental floral and it's uh, very delicate. It has an infusion of like coconut and rose petals in it. So it's alluring and it's subtle and it's soft and it's sexy. Like I love this fragrance. But for me, not being a fragrance person, it's bolder. It's bolder than I would normally wear, even though it's sheer and delicious and classic. So definitely add a little bit of fragrance or change up what you've been doing. And then number three, I always say, make a simple, fun change and then stick to it for a few days. That's yeah. a big thing, you know, just to get you out of your comfort zone. Like if you wear your hair to the left, try wearing it to the right, right? If you wear nude lipstick, Exactly. If you were just to get used Big to Big difference. Yeah, and it's just to get used to change because yeah, we always go right back to like, ah, da, 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 da. like we get so nervous about change. Right. So do little things that can, that, that get you out of your comfort zone. Like for me, it would be wearing a red lip. I very rarely do, but when I do, it's usually like the sexiest beauty. It's her warrior red or her, um, Racy Ruby, like I love those kind of like really clean, beautiful red. So that'll really pop you out of, of, of whatever you've been doing in your comfort zone. The other thing that I did or that you can do is it's a fun little thing. It can get you out of a little funk is matching polish and eyeliner. You can do it with purple, green, beige, red, any color. Like for instance, I, I'm wearing the green polish today. But this is Essay and it's called, um, I like their polishes. It's called Off Tropic. I'm wearing it now. Love it. Isn't that a beautiful green? Or now, just I didn't, I love it. I didn't put it on today. I'm wearing my green ring because I do love green. It's kind of my color for 2021. But this is from NYX and it's an eyeliner called Tropical Green. So it goes with the polish when it's on and it's a beautiful, beautiful match. So have some fun. That's a way of being bold without you know, really being over the top. And then the third thing you can do is to pick some of your beauty inspiration. Like if you've gone to Pinterest and you pick some beauty inspiration and then throw it in, do it that, you know, like take it, is it 1960s white eyeshadow, you know, throw that on. Is it a 1950s um, raspberry lip? Do that. So either 
So do the research for sure. Mm-hmm. Add in fragrance. It's the number one thing I say to be bold. I do love these two, Aaron um, Amber Musk from Estee Lauder and Pure Grace from Philosophy. Make some fun changes and stick to it for a few days to challenge yourself. I love it. I love it. And I love the fact that you give us little tips in that newsletter too, of your, your, and that uh, Pure Grace is in there, wasn't it? Well, yeah, I have, I think I even spoke about Erin uh, Amber Musk. I rarely get into fragrance. Both of them. Yeah. Yeah. But this 2021, I think we all need a little mood booster. By the way, if there is a fragrance that you've all been wearing, please share with me. Like I'm kind of into fragrance right now. So I ordered a bunch, I got a bunch of samples and really I have to say like uh, these two are my favorites, but I'd love to know your favorites. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So Jill. You, you know, in our sessions and our whole goal is to make our survivors and fighters unapologetically bold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I was thinking about your makeup techniques and, and what you do. And I was hoping that in, in this session, you can share with us, you know, your motivation and what you do as a makeup artist and a beauty authority to share your signature looks with our community. Yeah, absolutely. So as a makeup artist, I, um, I do tend to lean on certain looks that you would say are my signature looks. And one of those things that I love to do for boldness is smoky eyes. Now, let me be very clear on this. I do not do layered, super cut crease, put on... Sh- Almost curse. I don't know if they would cut it. Tons of, uh, I love to curse. Tons of concealer and then put your shadow over it. I, I honestly think, you know, that's a little ridiculous, especially when you start to, you're, you're mature. My preference is simple, it's easy, and it's elegant. Um, and usually my smoky eye is a fade out. And I'm going to show you that how simple it is. It's usually two colors, whether it be a black or gold, whether it be a tan and a, and a deep brown and an eyeliner. It's always sweeping. It's always very blended. And you really just need two colors, two brushes, you know, and an eyeliner and that's it. And the idea is it can be simple and still super, super bold. So I want to show joy because this is a great example Yes, here she of, is. of how I would do a really smoky eye. Okay, so on Joy, I remember this shoot like it was yesterday. I did, it's black and gray. And that's all it is. It's black and gray on her eyes. And I think that that is so bold and so very, very powerful. Mm-hmm. And I want to say when you're working with it, oh, I can even show you now to, to achieve a look like that. Just take. I'm going to try to zoom into her. Yeah, if you can't, don't worry. It's all right. I'll, I have it here, but convert this document. Yeah, there she is. There's, <laughs> oh, there's, there's she that is. face. There's that gorgeous face of joy. I love it. Okay. So you know what? That is really just two eyeshadows. Mm-hmm. Again, if you're, if you're doing it over the top, it's going to tend to just look over the top. So keep it simple. Really, just put on, I'm going I'm to do it right now with, uh, I'll do it with a brown. Let me just show you. So this is an old Laura Geller palette, like for instance. Sorry if I didn't even clean it, but you just want to take a stiffer brush and here's a, a, a nice, uh, a gray. I'm going to do the brown. So here's a brown, nice and matte. have my magnifying mirror right here I cannot see without it and all I want to do is I just want to go on the lid now which color are you using right there it's just a, a brown again just use one deeper color one lighter color on the lid I'm going to do the brown so it's uh, nice and simple because you can do this with any color I'm going to go underneath again you're going to smoke it underneath okay then I take And again, in the studio, I'm going to spend a little more time on it. But the idea is this is definitely a look I love. Here's a lighter color, just a little bit of a lighter color. And then then I will take it, the lighter color, into the crease to blend the whole thing out. I mean, I could pretty much do this with my eyes closed at this point in time. And then I would take a black eyeliner, line across the top. But it is your signature. Like it every makeup signature. artist does have a signature look. I'll go underneath. Go to. Yeah, this, yeah. look at the difference. Huge. Yeah, and 
you saw how fast I did that. So let me just even out my eyes. So my point is, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask me. Being bold doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of time going crazy, trying to get everything perfect. For me, seeing sweeps of color is always the most beautiful look that you can do. It's also elegant and it's also ageless. And that's what I like. I like things to be elegant and I like them to be ageless. I like them to be able to look good on um, whether you're 50 or whether you're 20, that it's, that it's a beautiful look. And that is kind of my signature. So that's something you'll always see from me over at Beautiful Self is these kind of bolder, smokier eyes. And, and those colors are in pretty much almost every makeup palette. Every right. makeup palette. And honestly, everyone has eyeshadows at home. Just pick two colors, just two colors that are, one is richer, one is lighter. Use your black eyeliner, the richer color on the lid, sweep it around, sweep that lighter color over it to blend out your edges, do it underneath, add a black eyeliner to it, mascara, and that's it. You could do it with blue, you could do it with purple, you could do it with black. And that is a, a very bold signature look that I like to do, but it's also very simple and clean. Home run. Home run inspired by joy. Uh, yes, that was, yes, I was inspired by joy that look. I'm so, I, oh, someone's asking me about best colors for uh, redheads with fair skin. Yeah, absolutely. If you're very fair and you have red hair, I would, I don't really like to use black, black, black colors. Obviously I think it can be too much, but what you can do is stick to something that is a little browner, a little golder, like brown and gold. And then a deep, rich brown pencil is beautiful on that skin tone. And then if you want something with more color, I would do a little bit of um, coppers and greens together. They're just so beautiful on fair skin. I would probably stay away from your purples and reds. Keep it earthy, keep it rich, but also keep it nature. Does that make sense? Keep nature colors. Earth tones. Earth tones. Keep it very okay. naturey. But the browns and the golds are spectacular. Mm -hmm. on uh, and the grays too even look really pretty on on a redhead with fair skin spectacular spectacular so now where are we going jill are we going into gorgeous well, well the, the 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 second thing that i really like um is i have to say that i think classic makeup is a bold choice believe it or not i think there's something to to be said about just having a flawless looking beautiful makeup um, and that's any age. And the key to that is going to be, here we go. And we're going to show you a few of the, uh, the images. This is Stephanie. And the key here to this look, and this to me is sexy and bold, but it's, but it's still classic, is sculpting, mm -hmm. blush, and highlighter, and, and then blending it. And I want to, I'm definitely going to show you, it's very easy because the sculpting is just kind of all over. And I think we even, I wanted to show, do we have Marcy's? Yes, I do. Before I even, before I demo. Give Marcy and where'd she go? Come on, there she is. So this is a very, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's classic, you know, it's bold in the fact that it's absolutely flawless and gorgeous. And to really get this look, it's about keeping everything clean and sculpting the skin. And that's what you see with a lot of my work at Beautiful Self is you'll see the sculpting of the skin, but it is in a very easy way. It's not in an overdone way. I don't like heavy, heavy, heavy makeup. I just don't like it. I never did. So one of the things uh, we're really to get, is this Miss Eva coming up? Mm -hmm. Ah, love Miss Eva. Okay. So again, do you see her? It's, it's just a little sculpting. That's very clean. That makeup is very classic. It's very easy, but yet she looks so polished and so bright and it's still bold in a way. You know, a classic can be bold. So again, the key elements there are going to be the sculpting, the blush, and the highlighter. So there's a few things you can do, and I want to show you. It's really easy to get. And again, I would spend more time on you in a studio, and it might not be absolutely perfect right now, but I just want to give you the idea. So I take anything. You could, this is like a MAC palette I have. And one of the things that you want to do is just to take, when I say sculpt, I'm not talking about crazy megawatts of contouring and lines on the face. I'm talking about a little lifting and I do this pretty much at every photo shoot that we do. So for me, I'm gonna go somewhere cause I'm pretty fair skinned. 
somewhere in this area. So you just want to go by your skin tone. So if you were super fair, you might want to blend something like this color with this color. So keep it like one or two shades deeper than your own skin and that's it. So I'm just going to do a little bit of blending. Okay. This should be the lightest part of what you do. Um, so what I want to do from any, any, like if you have big cheeks, I want to carve them out. If you have more hollow cheeks, I want to lift. So I'm a mature gal, right? I'm in my late fifties. I want to lift. Mm -hmm. So to lift, you want to go up higher and back. It's always about higher and back. You never want to go here because that makes you look dragged down, right? So we're going to go higher. I have to look in my <laughs> <laughs> mirror, sorry. So I'm going to go higher and back. I'm going to take this higher and back. I'm not going to blend it just yet. And I always go here, higher and back. And I'm always going to do a little in my hairline, slim out the jaw a little bit and back. Now, the second step is the blush. Nothing is really blended yet. It's not heavy, but you can kind of see it, right? I can't see. You're going to have to be my eyes, Michelle. You're going to have yeah. to tell me what's happening. No, the color that you used was like um, a couple I, shades deeper than your skin tone. That's it. And it was a MAC palette that I had, but I love Christopher Buckle warming powder. I yeah. love it. That's this cool. is from Impact Cosmetics. This is from Stanley's line. And this is called Om Gentle. And it is a gorgeous matte pink, which I love. Mm -hmm. So then what I do is I'm going to take the blush. So I'm just going to do just a little here. Ooh, a little yeah. blush. Just a little pink because it's lifting. Up, a little up. You, you can totally see it. It's already coming up, right? So just mm -hmm. a little. Now, then I take the highlighter. This is really a very clean, pretty classic look that everybody could do. There's two things you can do with highlighter. You can go soft. This is a, this is a Victoria Beckham from Estee Lauder palette that I happen to have. It's a very soft, light gold. So you can go soft, which this is. This is, believe it or not, on the skin, this is not heavy. Or you can do something that's a little bit brighter. This is one of Laura Geller's like, you know, diamond dust. That's going to be a lot more mm. holographic, right? So you can just choose what level of highlighter that you want. For our purposes today, I think I want to go a little bit softer. So I've lifted with the contour. I've lifted with the blush. I did a little bit of contour around the face just to kind of show the bones. Then I take a fluffier brush and go in this. This is a softer highlight, so I can be generous with it. And that's how I'm just going to kind of blend it all together. And this is exactly what I do with Beautiful Self to always, you know, and I think in our imagery, you always see on the skin that it, it has this kind of luminescence to it, that you see this great reflection and you see the sculpting on the skin. I'm just gonna go a little bit. A uh, question sure. about how do you apply a cream blush? With so, fingers or brush? I and, and where? Okay, so when it comes to cream blush, this is my preference as a makeup artist. I don't like using cream blush for contouring or anything like that. Cream blush to me um, should be used on the cheeks. It's meant to be a sheer wash of color. So I like fingers. I, I do it one of two ways. Fingers on the cheeks over a foundation. It's got to be over a foundation or a tinted moisturizer or something that's gonna make it move. Because if you put it over a dry skin, it's gonna look choppy. And then you're gonna look ruddy rather than flushed. Because cream blush, the whole purpose is that you look naturally flushed. So just fingertips, um, you can either mix a little of your own moisturizer into it, or you can um, make sure that you know, you've know you got, your skin is nice and it's got some slick, it's got some movement to it. So fingertips on the cheek. The other thing I do with cream blush is I use a stick foundation and I do dot, dot with actually like kind of a brush like this, right? Just like this. And I take like a Bobbi Brown or a Christopher Buckle stick foundation. There's NYX, everyone has a stick. So you take the stick, you take the blush, the cream blush. You go back and forth like this. So you have a little color and then circle it. Just circle it on those cheeks and back. Yes. On those okay. cheeks and back. Because that will give you that flushed look that cream blush is supposed to do. 
Love it. Love it. Okay. That, that was a great question, Julianne. So Jill, we've done eyes, your signature eye. We've done, now we know the secrets to contouring and the little blush. What about the lips? Well, I think one of the easiest things you can do to be bold is the lip. Um, I think it's the lip. There's three things. Let me end this off with three things. I think it's the lips. And I think it's a dramatic hairstyle or wearing a wig for fun. And I know that's a sensitive subject in the cancer community, but listen, I'm a survivor. So I feel like um, I'm talking amongst my own. And I think if you look at wigs as something that it's not a have to, but a fun thing, why not? Mm -hmm. I've never had long silky hair my whole life. I've got ridiculous frizzy um, you know, curly hair that tortures me. So for fun, I bought a long, silky Vera Fawcett brown wig when I was sick, you know, because that was so opposite of what my hair was. So I had more fun with it. So, or do a dramatic hairstyle. Don't hang on to hair that is not, you know, doing anything for you. Do something fun with it. So this is Heidi. Again, here's an example. How unapologetic is this? A blue lip. She asked for a bold lip like that. And this kind of rock and roll hairstyle. Love which her. I love, which I love. I think it's so beautiful. So yeah, look, rock and roll hairstyle. She's got the highlights in the front. It was still growing out. I think it's, I think it's fierce. And then the blue lip, she was like, no, give it to me, which is, she felt it. So that's a great way of trying something different. And she totally pulled it off. <laughs> yes. And by the way, I just want to answer Patty Green. She asked if you can use a bronzer to contour. Yes, if it's not too orange. But mm -hmm. sure, absolutely. Because you know what? I don't believe in heavy, heavy contour. So it's, it's perfect. And oh, there's Lisa Bellatico. Okay, so this was a lot of fun because, you know, it's a, it's a violet pink. It's a violet pink splashed mm -hmm. against orange. And it's very bold. I mean, I did an orange blush. I did an orange eyeshadow with gold. And, you know, if you look at the colors in the scarf, that was my inspiration for that whole look. But it was a really beautifully violet, glossy lip. I don't remember what the color is because this is like that shoot is from three years ago. So, you know, so have fun. That, you know, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to say kind of in summary is that look for beauty inspiration, go to Pinterest, look around, have fun. You know, you're not who you were. So let's have fun with who you are. Do something for a full day. That's opposite of what you would normally do. Do, you know, have fun with that. Don't be afraid to do classic makeup to be bold. Like actually do your makeup, make that skin glow every day. Don't be afraid to go simple and bold on the eyes. Don't be afraid to do a dramatic lip and do something different with fragrance just so you feel sexy. So you feel bolder. That's a great way to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Hey, if you're feeling like submitting some pictures to us to show us how bold you are, because we want to see it. We want to, we want to be inspired by our community too. So please send us your pictures because we're watching. Oh, we're following you too. We love it. <laughs> yes, please. We love the interaction with our community. Yes, absolutely. So next week, Jill, who, who do we have on next week? Do you recall? Yes. Next week is going to be, um, we have two people. We have author Shannon Mulvey. And uh, Annette Tello, who is also an author and a counselor, and they're going to be talking to us about really how you can write your own story, because yeah. after cancer, that is so cathartic, you know, it's a way, I mean, uh, so we've got published authors coming in to give us a little bit of um, tips on how to really tell our story and really how that helps us emotionally. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I think this is the best way to kick off 2021. New face. <laughs> <laughs> be bold, man. Be bold. New, fragrance, new face. Yeah, man. Be bold. <laughs> well, that is our assignment to you, beautiful self community. <laughs> and as always, stay strong, stay positive. You are beautiful. See you guys next week. Any questions, I'll go back and answer. Absolutely. Bye bye.